you have your Bible, we'd ask you to turn to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Again, another beautiful day that God gave us. Amen. Amen. Again, we hope you've already prayed. If not, we ask you to send your prayers today. But if you find your place, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we want to start reading at verse 8. 2 Corinthians 4, starting at verse 8. Eight. Scripture says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Thank you, if you would, to bow your heads. Father, again, we thank you, Lord, for another beautiful day. Yes. Father, we thank you for the, the beautiful sunshine. Father, we, above all, thank you for your son, Christ, yes. Father. Yes. Lord, we uh, just ask now that you'd take us out of the way, that the message can go out. Give us the words that need said and spoke this morning, Father, and if there be a need of burden, we pray to be brought them to you. Again, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask these things in Christ's name, and amen. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Purpose in trouble. Purpose in trouble. Uh, there are a lot of people this past year they look, Bill, and they don't understand why things have happened. Yeah. And even before this year, there, there are times that yeah. things happen to people, Rick, and they look and they say, well, this just don't make sense, or this just didn't fare. Right, right. But there is purpose in troubles. Yeah. There's right. purpose in troubles. Yeah. He says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Yeah. Folks, there is always going to be trouble. That's right. There is always going to be trouble. Right. Romans 7.21. Mm -hmm. Paul writes, I find then a law. Yes. In other words, I, I find this to always be true. Yes. I find then a law that when I would do good, yes. evil is present with me. Amen. Amen. Folks, if you think that the devil is just going to let you go, Sandy, and be a witness and not throw up any roadblocks. Right. We're mistaken. That's right. If you think that the devil... Just let all the churches have service today, Bill, and didn't throw up any roadblocks and said, okay, well, I'm going to play nice, Harley. I'm just going to wait until after service, and then I'll jump on everybody's backs again. Folks, don't kid yourself. That's right. That's right. The devil doesn't play fair. Mm -mm. No. The devil doesn't play by rules. Right. Troubled on every side. Yeah, and we are. There used to be a story or a children's book, and I forget what the name of it was, but in the story, it talked about the, the, the man facing trouble on every side. There was trouble above him. There was trouble below him, trouble behind him and in front of him. Uh, the different kinds of animals. There was like a lion in front of him, a, a, a bear or something behind him, a snake up in the tree, and, and a scorpion or something down on the ground. Folks, listen, we're troubled on every side. Yes, yes. And that's the way that Satan operates. Mm -hmm. right. uh, 1 Peter 5 eight says, Be sober, be vigilant, yeah. for your adversary, the devil. The devil. Yeah. Okay? If you didn't know who your enemy was today, then we'll, we, we'll educate you. Yes. <laughs> your adversary, the devil, Amen. as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Right, right. And folks, again, if you've watched any of these animal shows, right? The lion doesn't announce to the antelope, I'm coming to get you. No. He hides in the grass. Mm -hmm. He preys on the weak. Yes. He preys on those that, that have got away from the pack. Mm -hmm. Troubled on every side. Right. That's right. Folks, the enemy doesn't always come straight up at you no. and let you know that he's coming. He's going to sneak up on you. He's going to try to get you from the side. He's going to try to get you when you're weak. Mm -hmm. 
He says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Right. Troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Even in the midst of trouble, folks, you don't have to, to lose hope. Mm -mm. No, no. If you're a Christian, you shouldn't lose That's hope. That's right. That's right. Okay. Think back to the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 27. And uh, we'll try and say this without being too snarky, Bill. But listen, Bless there you. are people that, that, that look and say, listen, Doug, you don't know what I'm going through, all the things that I'm going through. Right. Read Acts chapter 27. Mm -hmm. Paul is on the way to Rome. Mm -hmm. He's told them this isn't a good idea. Right. Yeah, we do. Bad things are going to happen. It said for two weeks, yeah. a two-week storm. Right. Folks, listen, there, there are those of us now, amen or ouch, that we can't handle one little storm for yeah. a few hours, Rich. It's true. For two weeks, yeah. there's a storm. Yeah. Said that they didn't see the sun or the stars. Folks, listen, in total darkness, yeah. with the wind raging, with the seas raging, the ship ready to just mm -hmm. sink. But it said that in uh, Acts 27, 25, I believe it is, after Paul had been visited by the angel of the Lord, it said, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Yeah. Folks, there are people that will look at you nuts today if you say, listen, <laughs> look up. Yeah. Be happy. Yeah. He said, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told unto me. Right. Folks, listen, as Christians, that should be our testimony to a lost and dying world. Listen, I believe God that it's going to be even as he told it to me. Yes, amen. You may have lost hope. Mm -hmm. Everybody else may have lost hope. Mm -hmm. Everybody else may just sit there in the towel. But listen, I believe God. Folks, as Christians, that should be our testimony. I believe God. Amen. Trouble on every side, but not distress. Right. Perplexed, but not in despair. Yeah. Perplexed, but not in despair. Mm -hmm. there, there are people that just don't understand why these things are happening now. And I believe we said this last week, you know, if Bill, if we could have lived back in the Depression, yeah. there would have been the same things being sure. said there. Sure. Yeah. If you would have lived uh, in a time of war or whatever, same things would have been said. Right. But folks, that's the way we are. Mm -hmm. Rick, it's... It, it, it doesn't matter whether it's everybody else. It's bad for me. So now it's suddenly a, a catastrophe. Right, right. That's true. Folks, there's Very been famine true. for decades. Yeah. There's been pestilence for decades. Right. There's been sin since Eden. Yes. Yes. yes very Listen, nice. folks. We, we said this last week. Hard times didn't just start a year ago. No. Said so we were perplexed, but not in despair. Mm -hmm. There are those that just look and say, I just don't understand. I just can't, I, I don't know why this is going on. Well, folks, here's the problem. You're looking for answers within yes. your own head. Right. That's a mistake, Sandy. Yeah. Proverbs 3, yeah. verse 5 yeah. says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Yes. Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Right. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Right. Right. Listen, folks, if you're trying to sit and make sense of why certain things are happening, it'll drive you nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill, God was in control of Eden. Yes, yes. God was in control on the ark. Yes. God was in control at Calvary. Yes. Why would we not think that God's in control now? Right. Amen. It's a good Amen. question, Harley. But there, there are people that act like God's not in control now. He's still in control. Sure. Sure. Perplexed, but not in despair. Listen, folks, you can't let yourself just get all wound up seven ways from Sunday about stuff. God is still on the throne. God is still Amen. in control. Amen. Isaiah 55, he says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Yes. My ways are higher than your ways. We want a scientific explanation for everything. Right. right. It's true. Yeah. Our government wants a scientific explanation for everything. Our schools want a scientific explanation for everything. 
The atheists want a scientific explanation for everything. Right. The explanation was Moses held out a rod and the seas parted. Yes. He held it out again and, and the Egyptians perished. Right. And there were those that would look and say, well, listen, where they crossed was only six inches of water. And Bill, I think you've said this before. Well, then that, that's even more impressive that somebody, yep. that a whole army could drown in six inches of water. Yep. You want to make that argument? That's fine. Okay, then you've got, you got to acknowledge the other part, right? right? Perplexed, but not in despair. Folks, listen. You can't let circumstances put you in despair. Right. Right. You can't let circumstances put you in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken. Mm -hmm. Persecuted but not forsaken. Doug, I just don't understand why this is happening to me. Well, guess what? It's not just happening to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are other people that are suffering. Yes, that's right. Okay. That's right. Listen, folks, if your loved one dies, guess what? Mm -hmm. There are millions. Yes. That's that right. have lost a spouse. That's right. That have lost a daughter, yes. a son, yes. a grandfather. That's right. Mm -hmm. Just in this year. Yes. Okay. And that is always going to be. Yeah. There are those that have been uh, sick. Mm -hmm. Folks, guess what? Millions. Yeah. That's right. That have been sick. Right. If there wasn't, you know what? There'd be a lot of hospitals closed. I haven't seen any hospitals no. closed because of lack of, uh, no. of patients, Bill. No. Persecuted but not forsaken. There are, there are people that when they, they go through these troubles, again, they just give up hope. Yeah. They say, you know what? I, I've just been forsaken. <laughs> Folks, friends will forsake you. Yes, that's true. Family may forsake you. That's true. Your uh, uh, boss, your company, or whatever, right. they may forsake you. That's but true. folks, God will never forsake you. Amen. Amen. Psalms 34, 19. David writes and yeah. said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yeah. Now consider, David is saying this, a man after God's own heart. Yes. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Right. But the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Amen. Amen. So yeah, problems are going to come. But guess what? He says God will deliver them. Now is that deliverance always the way that we want? No. 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 Mm -mm. Is it always on our time schedule? No. no. But deliverance always comes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. David knew deliverance would come. He knew that he wasn't going to be forsaken. A few chapters over, Psalms 37, 25, I believe. He said, I once was young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken. Yes. Amen. Nor his seed begging bread. Amen. Yes. Folks, I'm 51 years old. Yes. And I can tell you that I have not seen the righteous forsaken in Amen. my 51 years. Amen. Again, Lillian and some of these older ones, they can make the same claim. Sure. They've not seen the righteous forsaken. Yeah. That's right. They've not seen his seed begging bread. Not only physical bread, but you know what? Yes. Spiritual bread. Yes, right. God hasn't shut the, 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 the mm -hmm. valve off, Harley. No. You go from the end of the Old Testament to the beginning of the New Testament, there's like four or 500 years there. There's no written revelation. Right. Folks, God hasn't shut the valve off now. Mm -hmm. Right. His seed isn't begging bread. It's readily available. But if yes. you don't come to dinner, Danny, yeah. then you shouldn't complain if we're hungry, right? Yeah. I have a son that complains that he's hungry all the time. <laughs> Go open a cabinet. Go open the fridge, That's right. okay? Yes. You're not that little boy that I held from here to here, okay? You can feed yourself, and there's stuff available. Folks, you can feed yourself, and there is bread available, yes. but you got to dig into it. Amen. Amen. you got to dig into it. But David said, listen, I, I realize I'm not forsaken. Mm -hmm. David went through hard times. Sure. Yes, he did. David was persecuted, mm -hmm. but he's never forsaken. Nope. Okay, well, you, you, you're an Old Testament guy, Doug. You're, you're constantly telling us about all these Old Testament people. Okay, well, let's go to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 3, mm -hmm. the Apostle Paul. 
right to Timothy, that thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, charity, patience, mm -hmm. persecution, afflictions, yes. afflictions which came to me at Antioch, right. at Iconium, at Lystra. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Amen. Yea, and all that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Right. David suffered persecution. The prophets suffered persecution. Paul suffered persecution. The apostles suffered persecution. Folks, what makes you better than them? That's right. Now, we ain't saying that to make you mad, but let, let's true. analyze this. True. What makes us any better that we wouldn't have to suffer right. persecution? That's right. Just like David, Paul said, listen, I, I've suffered persecution. At Antioch, they ran him out of town. At Iconium, they threatened to stone him. At Lystra, they actually did stone him. Yeah. Yeah. Took him and left him outside the city for dead. That's right. But Paul said, listen, out of, out of all these, the Lord's delivered. Yeah. Folks, again, there are a lot of people that will leave you. Yes, that's right. They will. But God isn't one of them. Nope. Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversation be without covenants yeah. and be content with such things as, as ye have. For yeah. he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Right. Amen. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Folks, God will never leave you. That's right. That's right. Now, there are those that have left him. Yeah. There are those that have turned their back on him. Yes, but, folks, have. God has never left or turned his back on anyone. And, Bill, I'm glad that you're going through Judges. That's, that, that's a good book to, to drive this point home. Mm -hmm. Listen, there are people, Rick, that we would look at and say, you know what? I'm done. You don't deserve a second chance. You don't yeah. deserve my forgiveness. You don't deserve whatever. But you study in the book of Judges, yeah. how many times, Bill, yeah. that, that he, he took them back? Yes, he did. That he forgave them? Yes. And yeah, they'd straighten up, and yeah. then they'd go right back. Yeah. And they'd straighten up, and they'd go right back. Right. But folks, that's the difference between Christianity and every other religion. Mm -hmm. Yes, true. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. You all know it, right? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and yeah. seek my face, yeah. then, yeah. then will I hear from heaven yeah. and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Right. That's right. Not forsaken. Mm -hmm. Joseph. You all know Doug likes Joseph, right? Bless him, Lord. Genesis thirty nine. After he sold him to slavery, and he comes to Potiphar's house, it said in, in verse 2, and the Lord was with Joseph. Yes, that's right. He was. Hardly his family had left him. Yeah. His friends had forsaken him. Yeah. They, they didn't know where he was. Only the Lord was with him. Right, that's right. And it said, and the Lord was with Joseph. Mm -hmm. But that next verse is just as important. It says, and his master saw that God was with Joseph. Right. There you go. And that everything that he did prospered. Yes. Listen, Potiphar looked at Joseph and said, there's something about this guy. Right. That's right. Folks, the world should be able to look at us mm -hmm. and say, there's something about this guy. There's something about this woman. Listen, it's easy to admire people when times are good. Everybody's friendly when times are good. Yeah. Right. Right. But folks, how are you when times are hard? Right. How are you when times are, are, are yeah. tough? That's when people notice. Listen, yeah. folks, when things are going good, nobody's going to notice. Yeah. It's true. Amen or ouch. That's Listen, right. Amen. when things are going good, nobody's going to notice because nobody cares. Mm -hmm. But when things are going bad and they see how you handle things, yeah. that is when they notice. Right. That's right. Said that his master noticed mm -hmm. that God was with him. Folks, before anybody can notice that God is with you, you got to realize that God's with you. Yes, right. Or there are Christians that are just in a continual pity party now. For whatever reason, then the woe is me. Old he haw song. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. 
Bless you, Folks, Lord. we don't know how blessed we are. That is true. That is true. We don't know how blessed we are. That is true. Amen. Said the Lord was with Joseph. He didn't forsake him. Mm -hmm. That's right. And even after he's falsely accused, after after his master turns his back on him, yeah. and he's put into prison and said, but the Lord was with Joseph. That's right. Twice in that chapter it says, but the Lord was with Joseph. Even if nobody else, mm -hmm. the Lord is with you. And it said that the, the keeper of the prison, he, he knew not what he had, Bill. In other words, he had turned all the accounting over to Joseph. He had that much faith, that much trust in him. He yeah. said, listen, I don't know how much yeah. is accounted for, but I know that you're taking care of it. Yeah. Right. Folks, what a testimony. Yes. What a testimony that, that, that a lost and dying person has that much faith in you. True. Folks, that's the testimony we should strive for. Persecuted but not forsaken. Listen, folks, persecution is going to happen. Yes, that one. Yea, and all that live, will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Okay. Listen, if you're not suffering persecution, mm -hmm. you need to ask a question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Now, Rick, some people ain't going to like the answer to that. Bless them all. You know why some people are not being persecuted? Mm -hmm. Because the devil doesn't regard them as a threat. Mm -hmm. True. Now, amen or else. Amen. <laughs> Listen, Bless if the devil's not putting roadblocks up against us, if the devil's not putting potholes in our way, then you know right. what? He's not that worried about us, Sandy. Mm -hmm. We're not that much of a threat to him. But yea, all that will live God in Christ Jesus, folks, those are the people that he attacks. Yes. Yes. Those are the people they attack, but it ain't the part timers. <laughs> right. It ain't the occasionalers. It's the faithful. Right. Sandy, that's who he's got to attack. Because if he can get them off of the way, then he can influence us. Right, right. The other people, who's going to notice? Mm -hmm. Who's going to notice? It's just like everybody else. Yeah. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Cast down, but not destroyed. <laughs> Folks, we're going to go through persecution. We're going to go through pain in this life. That's right. Okay. I appreciate Lillian coming. Yes. Amen. This Amen. morning and asking to be anointed. Because, Bill, it made me bow down. And I ain't bowed down since August. Bless him, Lord. Not because I haven't wanted to. Yeah. But because of my back and my knee, I didn't think I could get back up, Danny. He got us back up this morning. Praise the Lord. He got Lillian back up Praise this morning. Praise the Lord. Folks, cast down but not yeah. destroyed. Yes. Even when these things come upon us, listen, we're not destroyed. Mm -hmm. The devil would like us to be destroyed. Yes, he would. Yes, he would. He would like us to not get back up. Yes. But cast down, but not destroyed. Uh, we'll kind of spoil this for Bill. He's going to get to this in a few weeks, Lord willing. <laughs> Judges 16, you all recall the story of Samson, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. He had got involved yeah. with Delilah yeah. against his mother and father's wishes, True. against his mother and father's advice, against True. God's advice. Yeah. More than mom and dad's advice against God's advice. Yes, that's okay? right. Let's, folks, you can't get in bed mm -hmm. with the devil. That's right. And not expect there to be consequences. Right. That's right. And, and there are people today that don't understand. And folks, listen, sin has consequences. Yes, it does. Whatever it is mm -hmm. sex, drugs, alcohol, right. gambling, that's lying. Right. You know, there are people that have this in their mind that, you know, well, it's just a white lie. It don't matter. Ask Gehazi. Mm -hmm. Ask Gehazi <laughs> the consequences of yeah. lying. Yeah. After Naaman was healed and uh, Elisha said, listen, I don't need your, your yep. reward. Right. Because of greed, yes. Gehazi goes after him and says, listen, I, I know some people that can use this. It was him. He didn't say that to Naaman. Right. And he comes back and talks to Elisha, and Elisha already knows what he's done. Yeah, yeah. And he asks him, and he, and he straight up lies. Listen, folks, if you're willing to lie to a friend, mm -hmm. you're in sad shape. That's true. 
That's true. If you're willing to lie to a friend, if you're willing to lie to family, yeah. you're in sad shape. Right. You know what it cost Gehazi? It cost him his health. Yeah. said from that day forward, he was a leper. leper. That's right. That's right. Folks, there are consequences for sin. Anybody that tells you there's no consequences for sin, they're lying to you. That's right. There is a consequence for sin. There was a consequence for Samson's sin. He had been tucking. They had poked his eyes out. Yeah. They had hitched him up to a, a, a grist mill yeah. and made him just like a workhorse. Turned him into a circus sack. Thousands would come and watch this one that they had so feared. And they just laughed at him. Yeah. Folks, that's what the devil will do to you. Yeah. He will take someone, Sammy, who, who used to have a testimony, and when they start playing with sin, it's completely yeah. destroyed. And they become just a laughing stock. Mm -hmm. They become just a joke. Yeah. But the 25th verse, I think, of that chapter, 16, says, How be it? His hair began to grow yeah. after he was shaven. Yeah. Cast down, but not destroyed. They'd shaved his hair. They knew what the secret, the secret sauce was. Mm -hmm. That was the secret to his strength. And you know what? God could have just said, okay, you've made your bed, lie in it. Yeah. But it said, but his hair began to grow again. Folks, the world doesn't understand that. Bill, if yeah. they would have understood that, they would have shaved his head yes. every day. Every day, that's right. They would have shaved his head every day. Yeah. But they didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. And as bad as it was, as, as helpless as he was, don't you think that Samuel could, or Samuel, Samson, don't you think that Samson could feel his hair starting to come back out? Mm -hmm. Lord, I've really screwed up. Mm -hmm. I know I've really screwed up, but maybe there's hope, but you're going to hear me one last time. Right. And you know what? He heard him one last yes, time. Yes, he did. Amen. Said that he put him, told the lad to put him between the pillars and said he bowed with all his might. Mm -hmm. Folks, that's our problem today. We don't bow with all our might. True. We don't True. bow at all. True. Bless him all. But it said his hair began to grow again, even after he was shaven. Cast down, but not destroyed. Cast down, but not destroyed. A purpose in trouble. A purpose in trouble. There are those that look and, and say, well, I just wish God would take us out. Okay? I can't handle this anymore. I just wish that God would take us out of here. Okay? And I get that. I understand why people make this call. But folks, understand, Christ said the exact opposite of that. John 17, 15 said when he was praying to the Father, said, I, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, mm -hmm. but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Mm -hmm. So Christ himself, he knew what the disciples were going to face. Yeah. And instead of saying, Lord, just take them out before they face all this, said, just keep them from the evil, Father. Yeah. Give them strength. Yeah. Folks, I get that there are people that just want to give up. I get there are people that are tired. I get there are people that are weary. But again, he said, I'll never leave thee. I'll never forsake right. thee. Amen. There is a purpose in trouble. Mm -hmm. There is a purpose in trouble. Matthew 5. 14, somewhere around there. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, mm -hmm. but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all the house. Mm -hmm. Let your light so shine, therefore, before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Right, right. Not that they can look and say, Oh, Doug, what a wonderful man you right. are. That's right. That's oh, Peggy, what a wonderful woman you are. Oh, Bill, what a wonderful old guy you are. That's right. But that they glorify your Father. Yes. Which is in heaven. Amen. Folks, again, the purpose of troubles is that others can see. Mm -hmm. That others can see. It's hard for people to see during times of trouble. It, it's hard for people to see during times of trouble. When my dad passed away, 
a few hours before he died. He died about four in the morning, something like that. That evening, my uncle and I went down to the cafeteria at Raleigh General Hospital. We was the only ones in there, Sandy. And my uncle looked and he said, Doug, I just don't understand why your dad's having to go through this. He, he's a good guy. He's never done anything to anybody. And folks, not because he was Doug's dad, but you could have, you'd have been hard pressed, Danny, probably just like uh, Robert, to have found anybody that could have said anything bad about him. Okay? And my uncle just couldn't get over that. He had watched his, our, their older brother. He had had a heart attack. He had had dozens of strokes. He had lost his leg. He, he was stuck in a wheelchair, in a bedroom. Couldn't even talk for, for a great portion of his life. Okay. And now he's watching his younger brother go through something, and there's nothing that he can do. And he says, I just don't understand. And Harley, that's the hardest sermon I've ever had to preach. Just the two of us sitting in there. He says, I don't understand. Why is this happening to him? And my response was simply, there's a reason. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason. Yeah. Everything that he's going through, someone else is saying. Daddy, daddy. And uncle, you've got to understand. It isn't that God's mad at him. It isn't that God isn't hearing us. It's there is a reason and a purpose for why right. he's going through this. Right. And I love my Uncle Harold. I did. And he's going, he, he's passed away too. But again, because sin has consequences, Bill, he had destroyed his family. Because of some of the choices he made in life. He had destroyed part of his, his body because of the choices that he made in life. Right. And he could accept that and he would acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't understand why his brother yeah. was right. sitting in this bed suffering. And folks, th there are plenty of people that have that same testament. That's right. There are plenty of people True. that have that same uh, thing. But folks, here it is. You're going through this for a reason. Right, right. You're going through this for a reason. And listen, nobody's exempt. That's right. Nobody's exempt. The thing that struck me when my father passed away, I was the last one out of the hospital room. And I turned around and looked Harley. And you know what the thought that came to me? In a few hours, somebody else is going to be in this bed. Yeah. Tomorrow, somebody else is going to be in this room. Right. Listen, it wasn't all on Doug's family. Somebody else is going to be going through the same thing tomorrow. Somebody else is going to be going through the same thing next week. But how are we handling trouble? Do we realize that there's a purpose in trouble? That you're to be a light. Right, right. Not just when things are good, not when just times are happy. But when there's trouble, how do people view you? 1 Peter 3.17, seventeen. we'll close. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. This is one of these verses you probably ought to highlight in your Bible. For it is better if the will of God be so. And that's why you need to highlight that. For it is better if the will of God be so that we should suffer for well-doing mm -hmm. than evil-doing. Right. Listen, folks, when you suffer for evil-doing, mm -hmm. you're reaping what you sow. True, true. Now, amen or ouch, listen, if Doug has a heart attack because he weighs 300 pounds, well, that, that's Doug's that's right. fault because he wouldn't stop shoving the, the Twinkies in his mouth. He wouldn't get up and walk. Okay? Listen, folks, if your liver yeah. goes to pot yeah. and you've drank for 40 years, listen, there's nobody else to blame. Right, right. You can't blame Coors. You can't blame Budweiser. They didn't no. come, Bill, no. and open no. your mouth and shove it down. That's right. That's right. Folks, when we suffer for evil doing, we're reaping what we sow. Right. But when we suffer for well doing, mm -hmm. that's when you got to realize that there's purpose in trouble. Maybe it's for you to wake up. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's for you to be more thankful. But more likely, Bill, it's for someone else to see the light. Right. 
is for someone else to see how are they handling what they're going through. Right. Folks, there is purpose in trouble. Mm -hmm. Danny, if you come and give us another song. <laughs> Folks, if you have a need today, come. Yeah. Come. The altar is always open. Right, right. Folks, God is always ready and willing yes. and able yes. to listen, to hear, to forgive, to help. So if you have a need this morning, we'd ask you to come. Page 32. <clears throat> suitcases, bring those in uh, for the Children's Home Society. Get them to, to somebody that can use them. Any other announcements? We'll be having our annual business meeting the first Monday in May, uh, which will also include the elections uh, for officers. And we'll try to get a uh, ballot here that reflects uh, you know, the vacancies and uh, who's running here by Wednesday and some uh, nomination forms also. Anything else? Not Rick, dismiss. We thank you, Father, for this beautiful day you've given us yes. today, Father. We thank you for the message that you've yes. given us. Yes. We thank you for every family member that's come yes. out today, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We know your word and will never be taught in vain, Father. Yeah, that's right. The message is to go out through the day and bring Christ and make it Amen. 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 Amen.
Had you hit that already? No, it's still, still.